ethnic South Africa that was built on the backs of those who made a life commitment to die for our freedom. So, this is the cycle that every generation must be willing to participate in if they are interested in the freedom of the next generation. And that's us. The willingness to die for what we believe in. The willingness to die for what we believe in. Because we are enjoying freedom today. It does not mean that it came free. Freedom demands responsibility. The challenge that we have, not only in our country, but in the church and, you know, in the world at large, is that everybody wants to be free, but we don't want to take the responsibility that freedom produces. So these are a few nuggets that I'm just releasing to you so that you can understand that we have a different perspective of freedom that is contrary to the way the world believes. According to the world, freedom means you do what you want to do. Let people do what they want to do. But we know that that is not really freedom. If I allow you to do what you want to do in the church, it means that I am a parent that is irresponsible, that puts you in a space where you will find yourself in bondage. The same as you do as a parent. You don't just allow your children to come in when they want to. Stay out as long as they want to. Do what they'd love to do in the house. Not because you want to put them in a cage, but because you want them to grow up to be responsible. There are limitations to their freedom. Not bondages. Limitations. Freedom has boundaries as well. Freedom is not recklessness. Freedom is not uncontrolled. Freedom does not mean that we can do what we want to. If you are writing down, I would like to just give you a few nuggets and we want to make sure that our minds are aligned to what God's idea is of true freedom. Amen. True freedom is accepting that you are a slave of Christ. Just going to enlarge that and really just embellish that and just speak a little bit to that. True freedom is accepting that you are a slave of Christ. It almost sounds contradictory. Being a slave for Christ does not mean that you are in bondage. It means that you have true liberty. Let me explain it this way. The branch of a grapevine is slave to the vine. As soon as it gets its freedom from it, it dies. Are you with me? The branch of a tree is enslaved to the tree. Because I'm trying to explain to you that true freedom is accepting that you are a slave of Christ. It means that you are in bondage to freedom. It means that even if you try to be free, or if you try to let go of the freedom that Christ produces, you can't. You can't be liberated <laughs> from the bondage of the freedom in Christ. <laughs> Are you getting this? I, no one can save you. No one can save you from the bondage of the freedom in Christ. You are free. You can't help it. Because Jesus did it. That's a bit steep. You need to think on what I'm about to say. These are a few statements and a few nuggets that I'm giving you as we go along. So I said, the branch is slave to the vine. As soon as it gets its freedom from it, it dies. So, as soon as you get your freedom from Christ, you are dead. As soon as you declare independence from Christ, you are dead. Spiritually, you are dead. Nothing you touch will flourish. And that does not refer to you being able to make money. It means that nothing that you touch is actually blessed. 
if you have separated yourself from Christ and declared independence from Christ or of Christ, you are a living dead person. Let's move to the next point. True freedom is not the license to do whatever we want. But it is the ability to make the right moral choice when immoral alternatives are alluring. When immoral alternatives face you and give themselves to you. Freedom is understanding that you have the ability to say no. That's true freedom. Next point. Your first freedom or bondage your first freedom or bondage is where you put your mind. If you set your mind to win, you are free to win. If you set your mind to lose, you are free to lose. Are you here? Listen to this. I said it before, freedom is not synonymous to recklessness. It's not synonymous to recklessness. Christ gives freedom. Satan releases recklessness. Freedom is not synonymous to recklessness. It's not the same thing. Many times we say, I'd like to be free. But in essence, we really would love to be reckless. Uncontrollable ungovernable no directive no direction but the sad thing of that is this that when we meet up with challenges and collisions at the intersections when we've decided that the green light is actually red or the red is actually green when we meet up with collisions then we would like to blame a system that we deliberately decided to come up against When you receive the ability to do what you want to do, please accept the responsibility of the consequences because that's what you decided. Don't reject the consequences when you have claimed that you are free but you actually were reckless. So when you are reckless and uncontrollable, and you lack direction and governance which is actually protection don't be surprised at the consequences because you need to eat the fruit of your labor amen Christ gives freedom Satan releases recklessness freedom is liberty and space to live freedom is liberty and it is space to live you are allowed and afforded space to live whatever you do with that space will determine whether you understand that you are free or whether you have become reckless Recklessness promotes ill discipline. And it will lead you straight into a wreck. 